certainly the endocrine uh, branch of perineoplastic syndromes is the branch that gets most attention and uh, most discussion and is most interesting uh, because we have to remember that some tumor cells secrete hormones. So often endocrine uh, manifestations of tumors are generally referred to as being synonymous with perineoplastic syndromes. But we have to remember that there are myasthenia syndromes, skin, uh, bone joint, soft tissue, vascular, hematologic, as well as renal. But let's get into the biggest category, the endocrine. And I'm not too sure if you could see this, uh, and I don't need for you to see this. What I need for you to do is understand the concept. Here's the whole concept. Hormones are hormone-like substances. In some cases, more often than not, they're not the exact same amino acid sequence as the hormones. They'll just be similar to cause the effect. In some cases, they are precisely the same hormone. Uh, causing certain syndromes due to presence of those hormones are secreted in various types of tumors. And let's just uh, try to understand the principle rather than memorize them all unless that's what you love to do. Cushing syndrome, we know, is due to too much uh, corticosteroid secondary to ACTH or ACTH-like substances. You can see Cushing syndrome in small cell carcinoma of the lung, neural tumors, pancreatic carcinoma. Why? Because these tumors are secreting an ACTH-like substance. Similarly, antidiuretic hormone may be expressed uh, in small cell carcinoma of the lung as well as other, as well as intracranial neoplasms. Uh, probably the, one of the single biggest uh, types of uh, endocrinologic expression is hypercalcemia. So when a patient with cancer gets high calcium, it's not always or even necessarily because of uh, bone metastasis. Often it's because the tumor is expressing parathyroid hormone-like substances. We see that in lung carcinoma, breast carcinoma, renal carcinoma, leukemias, lymphomas, ovarian carcinomas. Uh, hypoglycemia can be present if the tumor secretes an insulin-like substance, like we see with certain sarcomas, as well as uh, liver cancer. Carcinoid syndrome, due to too much serotonin, perhaps bradykinin, is seen with bronchial adenomas, pancreatic carcinoma, gastric. Uh, and polycythemia is seen because certain tumors, especially renal carcinomas, but also cerebellar uh, vascular tumors, and uh, liver tumors can uh, express an erythropoietin-like substance. So uh, often these endocrinologic syndromes are evidence that a tumor is present. Grading and staging. This is probably the single most important concept in uh, cancer clinically, and I'm glad we're going to get to it because we're going to start to have some fun now. We're going to ask ourselves, what is grading? What is staging? Well, grading is a histologic, a histopathologic impression. If the tumor cells of the tumor resemble the cells from which they arose, that's considered a low grade or a high degree of differentiation. If the tumor cells in a tumor don't look anything at all like the cells they arose from. In other words, it may be an easy diagnosis of cancer, but a tough diagnosis to figure out where it came from, then that is known as a poor degree of differentiation or a high-grade tumor. Staging is simply how far has the anatomic extension occurred. Is the tumor limited to one area? Has it gone to regional lymph nodes? Has it become metastatic? For that reason, that is why the TNM classification is probably most commonly used with most organ systems, which we'll talk about uh, when we get to the organ systems. So here's an interesting question. What do you think is more 
important clinically how nasty the cells look under a microscope or how much anatomic extent of damage have they done. Of course, it would seem logical that staging is much more important than grading, and actually, it is. But let's talk about grading again. Let's have some fun. Let's say that on the uh, northeast corner here, you have a normal squamous mucosa. It happens to be skin, but it doesn't have to be. You can see the basal layer. You could see the prickle cell layer, stratum spinosum. You could see the stratum corneum. Okay, this is totally normal. The cells are maturing the way they should be. And now we have three different types of cancers. They're all from squamous cells, but in here, the one in the northwest, they look an awful lot like the skin, don't they? Well, that might be a hard diagnosis to make because it looks so much like normal skin. But the good news is it's the most well differentiated and therefore it probably has overall the best prognosis, everything else being equal. In the uh, middle section here, we can see tumor cells and they don't form these nice little pearls like we saw in the well differentiated uh, squamous cell cancer. But if you look closely, and of course you can't see them from where you're at, if you look closely at the separations between the tumor cells, you'll often see the desmosomes or tonofibrils or what they call intercellular bridges. And that pretty much clinches the fact that this is squamous cell carcinoma. Is it well differentiated? Probably not because it doesn't have pearls, but it's still a degree of differentiation where we could recognize it fairly easily as being of squamous origin. On the other hand, this big nasty bad boy on the bottom uh, is a very easy diagnosis of cancer because the cells look as malignant as hell. We have a mitosis here going in four different directions. We have gigantic cells. They look nasty. They're very hyperchromatic and pleomorphic. Remember, those are the two most common words used on pathology reports. And even though it's the easiest diagnosis, it's the poorest prognosis. So a well, moderate, and poor differentiation would correspond to a low, medium, and high grade from a grading point of view. Let's look at uh, an adenocarcinoma now. If I told you to go look into your histology book and tell me which one of these four pictures is normal prostate, uh, I think you'd know it wasn't this one. I think you'd probably think it's this one because the uh, nuclei are all arranged nice in a row. You can see separation between glands. You can see some secretion. So here we have in the uh, southeast a totally histology textbook normal prostate. And what if I told you that the other three were cancers? Your question would be, how much do these three cancers resemble the original prostate? Well, if you said this doesn't look like it at all, you don't see glands at all, then you could say, well, that's the poorest differentiation. It might even be given a high Gleason's number or uh, just generally described as poorly differentiated because you don't see any glands. Up here, the glands look a lot like this, so it may be a tough diagnosis, but it's a better prognosis than the poorly differentiated one. And of course, here in the Northeast, they're not quite fully or nicely as differentiated as these. So the ultimate uh, moral to this story is that if we have normal prostate here, here is a well differentiated, here is a moderately differentiated, and here is a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. And in essence, uh, these can be given numbers, uh, a so-called Gleason's system, and that number can be uh, manipulated and juggled and duplicated and talked about being in different areas. So you might wind up having a Gleason's number when you look at uh, prostate uh, tumors, which we'll get into later. Okay, I think we'll call it uh, uh, a day for now, and we'll finish up with the last couple of slides in the next 10-minute clip. Thank you very much.